24-year-old Lena considers herself lucky to be alive. This could well have been her final resting place if the cruel and perverse Roman Hines had his way. She stopped his sexual attack on her friend Beatrice, but now she was his target. How Lena survives is extraordinary. If you didn't fight back, where would you be today? Ah, uh, probably not alive, I guess. Her fight for survival went on for hours. As the injured Lena runs away from Heinz, he jumps into his four-wheel drive to chase her down. Lena is not only trying to get away, she also wants to find and help Beatrice. I wasn't sure where Beatrice wa was at that time. So I was uh, yelling for her, like, where are you, where are you? I don't know where exactly he was. I think he went to his car to chase us. And at this moment, she untied my arms. So she saved me again at this moment. And that's when I have the opportunity to survive. Whose idea was it to go separate ways? I think Panic. it was... Yeah, just a natural decision that we sort of both had together, you know. It was clear to, somehow. <laughs> yeah, that we had to split up. That you'd have a better chance yeah. at escaping. <laughs> but which direction to take was another fateful decision. Beatrice went left, up into the sand dunes, and Lena right. Naked and frightened, Beatrice hid in the bushes, but Lena was in full sight. Then he turned around and he started chasing me and I was running in all different directions pretty much, but on this flat area here. You must have been terrified again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're, I mean, look at you, you're little, and he's got this four-wheel drive and he's chasing you. It's huge, the car, and I didn't really know what to do. The only chance was just running away as fast as I could. Weaving between scrubby salt bushes, Lena ran for nearly a kilometre, with Heinz constantly on her tail intent on running her down. It's hard to imagine her terror. What freaked me out was, A, there were small footprints, you see, so it was not much of a, a girl. It was obviously a, a small person. But the footprints were, like, four feet apart. And uh, as clear as a bell, that's someone running for their life. The hunt ended here. Lena had nowhere else to run. He finally reached me with the car and just bumped into me pretty much in my back. With the bumper bump? So, yeah. So you're running and he's got you? Yeah. So how many times did he do that to you? He did that, like, I think four times and always bumping into me with the bull bar. And then I flew away in the sand, but always stood up again. Do you think this is the spot where I will die? Yeah. I thought I'm going to die. I was really sure about it. Like, I already imagined myself dying here, and that's why I didn't want to give up in the end, because I was so, like, so, so determined that I didn't want to die here. I really don't want to die, to die in, in, on this spot, not here, not now. Physically at her weakest, Lena now makes a truly remarkable decision. 
I realized that I got weaker and weaker. I, I knew I couldn't go on for this for very long. So I remember when, when he turned around the next time and was facing me with the car, I thought like, okay, I have to do something because I can't keep on going. And so I pretty much ran towards the car and just jumped on the bonnet. And I was holding myself on the antenna of the, of the car and then pushing myself up on the bonnet and then straight going onto the roof because I, I thought like, okay, I'm safe on the roof. He can't get on the roof. I'm laughing because <laughs> I can't help it, but it's because you're so extraordinary. Like, how did you think to do that? How could you do that physically? It's incredible. I felt like a bit like in a movie. It felt, <laughs> felt like James Bond a bit. Roman Heinz's reaction to you doing that? He was really angry, like really angry and was shouting at me, get off the fucking roof, get off the fucking roof. He said it like 10 times, but I was really angry as well. He tried to climb on the roof and was trying to hit me with the hammer again. And I remember I tried to like kick in his face. To be in this situation where this man is clearly trying to get you, you're bleeding profusely. It was like, yeah, like a blood rain. It like kept on dripping onto the roof. That's when I knew like it's really serious because it just kept on dripping, didn't stop. Like blood rain, you said? Yeah, blood rain. Unable to shout her down, the furious Hines tries everything to dislodge Lena from his roof, driving first along the beach and then through the sand dunes. He was like driving like a madman through everything. It was quite like, it was quite rough, like, like being on a road here. That's how I felt like. Petrified Heinz would be back. Beatrice stays hidden behind bushes until, unexpectedly, her luck changes. She sees another car, makes sure it's not Roman's, before desperately flagging down the driver and his friends. Can you describe the image they would have seen coming at them yeah. out of the sand dunes? Yes, like a girl, naked, running, waving for them. And I think when they saw me, they thought that that was weird. But once I got in the car and I started screaming, they saw that it was serious. The young, freaked out fisherman called Adam Stewart the owner of the local and only roadhouse in the area. This, um, some girl on the beach has been raped was the first thing he said. There's um, this basically some guys raped and bashing some girls on the beach and just panic, like just an extreme level of help. While Adam called police and prepared to head to the beach, Beatrice convinced her rescuers to search for Lena. And they want me to like take me back to the entrance to save me, but then I said no, my friend's still there. And they agreed with me to try to look for her, you know. And I think that's the moment when indirectly I saved her back, you know, because Roman knew that there was someone else chasing him. It's an incredible story of survival. Never did the small but feisty Lena give up. 
Even though she was still at the mercy of this monster, mentally, Lena was stronger, setting the rules that would lead to her freedom. He was like, get off the roof, like, I'm not driving any further with you on the roof. And he said, this is ridiculous. I remember that he said that, and I was like, why is it ridiculous? Like, why should I come off the roof? You, you tried to kill me, like, why should I even trust you? So I told him, I only come off the roof if you throw away your weapons. He had two hammers and there was a knife. Remarkably, he listened to her. And perhaps seized by sympathy, Heinz handed Lena her cap to help stem the blood gushing from her scalp. But the kindness is short-lived. With Lena now in the front seat, he races up the beach past another group of fishermen. Roman had just driven through the campsite and uh, one of the boys in particular had a really, really good view of notice that in the passenger seat was a young girl covered in blood and all you could see was an arm waving. Um, and then they roared off up the beach. Waving as in waving for help? Uh, it was more so flapping out of the car. Not a lot of energy in it. Despite their own fear, the young men got back in their car and followed, finally cornering Hines in the sand dunes. And it's a chilling phone call. The kids on the phone just start going mental. That's like, we can see him, Adam. We can see the car. We can see, we can see him and sound on that voice coming through that phone. Those kids were, were scared, and rightly so. And, um, and I'm like, where's the girl? Can you see the girl? No, no, we can only see him. I finally opened the door. It was like, please, Lena, get back into the car. And I said, no, I'm going to the fisherman now. He looked really confused, like not, like as if he didn't know what to do really with this kind of situation. And then I pretty much just ran away and I turned around a couple of times, but he didn't come after me. It's being described as being so bad that those men didn't know if you were a man or a woman. Yeah, I, I had no idea. That's what they told me later. And that's why they were so scared and didn't want to come towards me. Roman Hines didn't stick around for Lena's rescue and fled the scene in his four-wheel drive. With sunlight fading fast and hundreds of kilometres of sand dunes to cover, it became a race against time. From that moment on, it was it was just a hunt. We were after him, you know. We, we knew the girls were safe. We just got to find this guy. Coming up, the hunter becomes the hunted. It was ending there. It was ending one way or another. We were just going to... Well, you were just going to ram him. Yeah. <laughs> and one more chilling twist. Four years ago, Roman Hines stopped here at the roadhouse. Witnesses saw him with a young blonde woman they assumed was a backpacker. That's next on 60 Minutes.